Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here, and welcome to my review for the Deluxe Animus Megazord from Power Rangers Wild Force. As part of my retro review series, it's actually really funny, I can't believe I didn't realize that I never did one of these for the retro review series. I still have Predazord and then the Ultimus to do, but I have this one here ready. Um, as usual, I'm missing pieces from things, mainly like the most important thing I'm missing is the little horns that go with this um, for the Megazord mode specifically. You can notice that I feel more because it goes up above the chest. Actually, I'm kind of used to it not having it, but I am missing that. And I picked it up actually at Morphicon for about 20 bucks, so I was like, this is a pretty good price, I don't mind missing these, and it's right here, and I want toys. That's basically my logic. But anyway, if you didn't know, um, or you can't tell, this is basically a repaint slash slight remolding of the regular Wild Force Swords. I don't remember how much in Gal Ranger we saw them individually, but we very rarely saw them individually in Wild Force. But let's go ahead and get started. So you have Black Lion, which is pretty obviously not the Black Lion from Voltron. I don't see Shiro or Keith anywhere. Um, but, you know, it's probably the most just straight up recolored of the bunch. I'm going to put that down because that's definitely going to fall. Um, just rather than being, you know, the red and gold, you have black and then this sort of... I'm not even sure how to describe this. It's like a kind of brown, but not. It's weird. Like, it kind of works, and I do kind of dig it, because I'm kind of a fan of, like, the black repaint zords, because I always look really sleek. But I almost kind of wish they would have kept, like, this gold for this. I think it would have looked even cooler. But it works, like, especially once it's together. But other than that, you know, it's the same exact mold. Like I said, it's the least, um, like, overhauled in any way with, like, any molding pieces. It's primarily just the color. Um, but it's a pretty nice little Zord. These are inherently smaller Zords um, than some of the other ones that you get in the past, just in general. But they, they feel like pretty nice quality. They have, like, die-cast pieces here. You get little bits of articulation, which is mainly due to transformation. But, you know, it also allows you to have a little bit of freedom in the way you, uh, you know, play with it and stuff. And you can open the mouth up here and, and whatnot. You have these little bits sticking out, but you can put them back like this, which I forgot to do, so I apologize about that. Um, and then the tail here, you can move a little bit and stuff like that. So yeah, he overall looks pretty good. I think these Wild Zords in general look pretty good individually. Um, then you have the Saw Shark here, which is pretty easy repaint, you know, oops, forgot to pull the fins out. Um, you know, instead of being blue here, it's kind of this, like, maroon color with the gold. And then they add on this big soft shark piece, which looks really cool. It's also removable. And then this piece, um, as usual, just like with uh, regular Wild Force Megazord, is going to be um, the sword. So that's neat. And then you got the little fins under here. The little wheels. You can see that there's die cast pieces here. Um, so that's cool. Then we have the Jaguar Zord here, which is an obvious repaint of the White Rangers. It's funny, when I was younger, I always thought it was a cheetah, but I guess, you know, it, it is a Jaguar. Just, I think when I was younger, I thought cheetah's yellow, and then Jungle Fury didn't help. I'm like, Jaguars are blue, have you not watched Jungle Fury? But yeah, this one's a little bit looser here. I think that's just from mine. It might not necessarily be yours. Um, but the mouth opens, just like with the other one uh, for, for Red. You get some articulation bits because of the way the transformation is. But it makes it nice and not so stiff. And I think it overall looks pretty good. I think it's one of the better uh, ones at hiding, like, the sort of the transformation -y bits of it. And it's a pretty cool design. You got the tail here as well, the die cast pieces. Um, this is probably the most loose of mine. But again, that's mine and not, not some, bleh, excuse me might not necessarily be yours depending on what kind of condition yours is in or you get it in all right then you have the condor zord here this is the one that i have that's missing um the piece which is like these little bits back here which basically become horns in the megazord mode it honestly kind of makes it look more godly um but I'm just missing it. It looks okay to me without it. I'm hoping to track it down someday in some form. But other than that, the design on this is pretty cool. I really like the blue and gold paint together. I think it looks pretty good. Um, pretty standard the way it hides this back here. Because you remember on Wild Force, it had like the, look like, you know, the back tail feathers for the, the helmet on that one. Um, and you get some little bits of articulation too for that. And uh, can its beak, oh no, its beak can't open unless it's supposed to be broken here. But yeah, uh, I keep having this reflex of like usually the beak ones it will have like a little tab here and you pull it down like that but you do get little bits of articulation and you can move the wings around um to how you want um which again as usual it's like kind of part of transformation but it also kind of works out that you can sort of quote unquote pose these a little bit if you want to then we have the buffalo zord which is a redone version of you know the bison zord um it now it's primarily brown and gold, and you have different horns here. It's a pretty simple change. Um, I think I prefer um, the regular edition or the original edition a little bit more um, on there. But he looks fine, you know, and you can... I think he... probably him and Lion, I think, are the most noticeable ones in terms of, like, 
they're just really more basic, like, retell- almost said retellings, like it's a story. Um, like, the horns here are the only real significant difference outside of the color. I mean, this is pretty simple too, it's just a saw blade, but I just feel it makes it look significantly different. But yeah, overall, I think they're pretty good repaints. Like, they, they did a pretty good job for the most part, except for Lion, which is just, hey, it's Black Lion. But of making them feel, like, different, but kind of echoing it, um, and especially in the narrative, I think it worked. So I do like them individually, and again, I think that even though they're kind of smaller Zords than some of the ones that preceded this from other series, um, and some that, that um, succeeded it, but uh, they're still like nice looking just on their own. So if you wanted a display of like the bunch of wild zords, you could do that pretty pretty nicely. Um, but let's go ahead and transform it. Buffalo um, is like the most quote unquote complicated one. It's like it's easy, but it's just got like the most little steps that aren't as obvious. Like basically, just unfold this and then unsnap this. This is gonna twirl around here in a minute. And fold these up. Fold these in. Oops, sorry, that was off screen. I didn't mean that to be off screen. But fold those in, and then take these bits here and fold them back so that they're at, out of your way, and fold them back here, and then they separate, and you got that. It's it's it is simple. It's not like difficult to do, but it's probably the most like involved compared to some of the other ones, which are really straightforward. It's pretty satisfying, I would say, to transform. Like, I like the way it just all transforms um, and transforms back. And then you just take this bit here and spin it around, which I also find to be a pretty satisfying little move there. Okay, now if we're just building upwards, we've got Lion here, who's pretty simple to do. You basically just fold his legs up and out of the way. Let's get that out of the way for a second. Same thing here. Just kind of fold up and out of the way. This bit's gonna want to stay down so you can get it ready for Condor, basically. We'll kind of adjust that a little more later. Um, but snap this in. The way, it's kind of weird, like this bit kind of latches onto the back. I found it's easier to like sort of pre, almost like it feels like a can opener, pre-put it on there and then snap it on. It just, it feels weird, like it's harder to get on there if you just try to straight up snap it on um, without doing, you know, the little latch on there first. And again, we'll adjust these here. In a Quick little cut in here, because I forgot to show it. Just like kind of an easy way moving the, the lion legs out of the way. Just kind of fold them up this way, kind of into itself. It looks a lot sleeker. You don't just have lion legs hanging off the back. I just completely forgot to do it there near the end. So, all right, back to the regular review. Okay, now the arms are pretty simple for these. You just basically are going to want to put these legs away. Like these are going to fold. Let me get this to focus on it right here. There we go. These are just going to fold right in. And then they kind of like snap in too and fold out of the way. Like they're kind of out when it's in animal mode so you can get a little bit more posing and stuff. It looks more natural. But then once you fold them in, they kind of snap in. Um, these ones too, you kind of fold them in here like so. And then you kind of twist it around like this. And we're going to get the, the tail out of the way. And then twist this kind of align these together a little bit and then don't forget to pull out these bits here so they can come the arms same thing for over here and then sharks even easier just take this bit off because it's going to become the sword and then turn this bit and then this kind of opens more to give you some articulation which is nice and like this will bend a little bit too which is nice um, but yeah th that's pretty much ready for you and just snap it on there and then condor basically you just pull this up, twist it around, and you can kind of fold these back here, and then snap it on right up here. Let me move these out of the way so they're not clashing with each other. There you go, and you can see that that kind of nests in there. And then usually you would have the horns coming up here to make it look a lot more majestic. And then we've got the fin here. Okay, that's good enough kind of adjust these a bit, but then there you pretty much have the Animus Megazord, and you could, it actually looks a little bit different, I mean, it, obviously it looks different than the Wild Force Megazord, but I feel like the head sculpt in particular stands out a little bit, and the way that the eagles used um, is different, which is neat, and it kind of makes it seem um, more different. Again, I've always liked this design, I thought it looked really cool for like the deity aspect, but I also like that it does a good job of, while clearly you know, being a repaint slash remold of the Wild Force Megazord, it also 
is its own thing, and it's kind of this neat way of like this, you know, is the past that's echoing to the future, which is the Wild Force Megazord. And it just, I don't know, I always thought it was neat. It's got a really cool design. It does look a little bit neater with the horns on there, because I, again, I feel it makes it look more like a Deity Megazord type deal. Um, but I'm kind of fine without it again. I'll probably track it down one day, so I apologize I don't have that part. But yeah, and it's a, it's a nice looking Megazord. The, the paint all looks really nice. The die cast metal pieces look good. I think the proportions are pretty well done. Honestly, I think the Wild Force Gal Ranger ones in general are really well done proportion wise, where they're some of the closest, in my opinion, to like what the suits look like in the show, which is really neat, in my opinion, just because like sometimes they can look super blocky. And these aren't perfect or anything, but they, I think, have the best representation of kind of being mobile but a little bit bulky. Like it's pretty neat, and I think they just look really nice. And as I showed before, something that's cool with these is you do get little bits of articulation, so. That's kind of nice. This kind of, but not really, because look, he can articulate his head, but he forgot to take his hat with him. Or actually, it's the opposite way around. He can articulate his hat, but he forgot to take his head with him. But so yeah, it's overall pretty nice, and I think this Megazord's a really nice design. I think if you're a fan of it, I can definitely recommend tracking it down. I think the only main Wild Force Zords I have left to cover for this retro review series, also don't forget to fold these fins out like me, um, for this retro review series is uh, Predazord and uh, Ultimus, um, which I will, as soon as I get my hands on those, those will be a part of the review series. But anyway, that's about it. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to climb the steps and ring that bell to get the notifications for all my videos. Until next time, Dawson Rider, signing out.